Is Iran's latest missile shifting power in the Middle East? What if Iran's new missile can outpace the world's best defenses and take over the Middle East soon? Imagine a world where the balance of power can shift in the blink of an eye. That's precisely the scenario unfolding as Iran unveils its latest game changer, the Fatal II hypersonic missile. This isn't just another missile, it's a leap into the future of warfare, propelling Iran into an arms race dominated by China and Russia. First of all, we need to see what hypersonic missiles are and what is the hype about them in international warfare. These machines can tear through the sky faster than Mach 5. That's an astonishing 3,806 miles per hour, or five times the speed of sound. Picture a machine so incredibly fast that it could make the journey from New York to London, a distance of about 3,500 miles, in under an hour. Next, envision a missile that's not just fast, but also smart and intelligent. Hypersonics don't restrict themselves to the predictable paths of traditional missiles. Instead, they can zigzag, weave, and even undertake sudden directional changes at immense speeds. This flexibility is enabled by sophisticated flight control systems designed to adjust the missile's trajectory in real time, responding to external conditions and internal guidance commands. These systems often utilize advanced algorithms and sensors, allowing the missile to make split-second decisions and letting them effectively dodge their enemies by slipping away from even the most advanced defense systems. The integration of such advanced technology lets hypersonic missiles stand at the forefront of modern military technology, definitely giving an edge to countries who own them in Middle East power control. What makes these missiles even more formidable is their ability to carry different types of warheads. Whether it's a conventional explosive for a precision strike or a nuclear warhead for massive destruction, hypersonic missiles have got it all. This versatility makes them a Swiss Army knife in military strategy, adaptable to various scenarios. Hypersonic missiles come with a trick. They can be launched in two ways. Some are shot into the sky like a rocket, while others are dropped from bomber aircraft, swooping down on their targets. This dual launch capability means they can be deployed from land, air, and potentially sea, making them a triple threat to their enemies. But hold on, the most astonishing feature of these technological marvels, particularly Iran's hypersonic missile, is yet to be revealed, the scramjet engine. It's the heart of the hypersonic missile, a true engineering masterpiece. Think of an engine that doesn't just pass through the air, but uses it as fuel. This is what scramjet, supersonic combustion ramjet engines do. They work faster than sound, taking in air at high velocity, which they use to burn fuel. Unlike traditional rocket engines that need to carry oxygen with them, scramjets take advantage of the air they're flying through. This means they're not weighed down by heavy oxygen tanks, making them lighter and much faster. It places Iran in a prominent position in the race for hypersonic supremacy. Now, we are focusing on Iran's remarkable journey in hypersonic development. Their program has evolved from the Fatal One, a ballistic missile, to the much more sophisticated Fatal Two, a cruise missile. But before we look at it in detail, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Iran unveiled a new hypersonic missile on November 19th, claiming capabilities that surpassed those of an earlier version of the missile unveiled earlier this year. Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizadeh, commander of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Aerospace Force, presented the new missile Fatah II, Conqueror II, at a military exposition visited by Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Upon unveiling the original Fatah missile, Iranian state TV reportedly claimed the weapon can bypass the most advanced anti-ballistic missile systems of the United States and the Zionist regime, including Israel's Iron Dome, adding that the Fatah is a big generational leap in the field of missiles. Let's explore the groundbreaking transition from Iran's Fatal One to the more advanced Fatal Two missile, and why this shift is turning heads around the world. The beginning of Iran's missile journey, Fatal One, was Iran's foray into the world of ballistic missiles. Ballistic missiles are like powerful arrows shot from a bow. They are launched into the sky on a predetermined path, 
arcing high into the atmosphere before descending onto their target. They're fast and powerful, but follow a predictable trajectory, making them vulnerable to interception. Enter Fatah 2, a game changer in every sense. Unlike its predecessor, Fatal 2 is a cruise missile. This means it doesn't just go up and down like a ballistic missile. Instead, it can cruise at lower altitudes, hugging the landscape and evading radar detection. It's like comparing a soaring eagle, Fatal 1, to a stealthy panther, Fatal 2, that can navigate the terrain with cunning and agility. This shift from a ballistic to a cruise missile is monumental. Fatah 2's ability to navigate complex flight paths makes it a more elusive and unpredictable weapon. It can maneuver around defenses, change its course mid-flight, and accurately strike targets. This adaptability symbolizes Iran's growing technological sophistication. In June, the Islamic Republic unveiled the allegedly hypersonic Fatah-1, Conqueror-1, a ballistic missile it claimed had a range of 1,400 kilometers and was powered by a solid propellant motor. It could reach Israel in 400 seconds if launched from Iranian territory. Now, this new missile, Fatah-2, has a new design that Iran claims helps it to maneuver and will enable it to hit targets and not be detected. Tehran also said that, unlike the first Fatah, the Fatah-2 uses a liquid-fuel rocket propellant. It seems that this liquid-fuel engine is a new design specially developed for Fatah-2. Iran's Tasnim says, with the help of this engine, Fatah-2 can travel complex and unpredictable routes in the atmosphere, while the liquid-fuel engine has the ability to adjust the thrust force, which helps to optimize the flight path and achieve greater range and better control over the flight speed. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, showed the missile over the weekend, according to Iranian reports. There is no doubt that Iran wants the world to believe it has these missiles. It is clearly sending a message to the region, including Israel. Nevertheless, Iran has an impressive missile and rocket program, exporting these threats all over the region. The threat must, therefore, be taken seriously by regional countries. For example, the relationship between Iran and the United States has been historically tense, marked by incidents that have threatened to escalate into larger conflicts. Take, for instance, the episode in January 2020 when Iran launched ballistic missiles at Iraqi bases housing U.S. troops. This was in retaliation for the U.S. killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. While there were no U.S. casualties, the attack heightened fears of a full-blown conflict. Now, imagine Iran equipped with hypersonic missiles. The stakes get even higher. These missiles' ability to strike with unprecedented speed could put U.S. assets like aircraft carriers and bases in the region at greater risk. In response, the U.S. might build up its defensive deployments or develop new countermeasures, potentially triggering a new kind of arms race in the Middle East. But has Iran invested heavily in modern warfare for the U.S. only? Let's find out. Iran has repeatedly been accused of supplying arms to Hezbollah, a Lebanese militant group and political party opposed to Israel. With hypersonic missiles in the picture, Israel's fear could reach new heights. The traditional missile defense systems, like the Iron Dome, might not be effective against the speed and maneuverability of hypersonic weapons. Moreover, Iran's involvement in Yemen, particularly its support for the Houthi rebels, is a major factor in regional instability. The conflict in Yemen has already seen missile attacks, like the Houthi missile strikes on Saudi oil facilities in 2019, which disrupted global oil supplies and escalated regional tensions. If Iran were to extend hypersonic missile technology to the Houthis, it would significantly alter the military landscape in Yemen. Such a scenario could prompt Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries to seek similar advancements, raising the specter of a regional arms race. But before preparing for the arms race, all the enemies of Iran were curious about one aspect, how a country in an economic crisis managed to heavily invest in such modern warfare technology. In a world where economic strength often equates to military might, Iran's advancement in missile technology, particularly under severe economic strain, has left many stunned. There's a hot debate going on between major players about the authenticity of Iran's claims. Is the Fatal 2 as advanced as they say, or is it a strategic exaggeration? There's a wave of skepticism echoing from experts like Abed Irma in New Delhi. 
Why? Because Iran has a history that's making these experts raise their eyebrows. Let's delve into this skepticism a bit more. Over the years, Iran has made several claims about their military might and technological advances. But here's the catch. Not all of these claims have turned out to be true. It's like when someone tells you they can run a marathon in under two hours. It's possible, but you'd probably want to see it to believe it. So countries are waiting to see solid proof of Iran's new hypersonic missiles before they start rethinking their entire strategy or defense systems. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. Stay tuned for more updates. Until next time.